Today we're going to be talking about building shells with leaning arches as a project case study. Uh, this presentation and paper was put together by myself, Devin Ryan, Amandine Sosimo, and a colleague of ours, Marcin March. We work from Thornton Tomasetti out of the Manhattan office, and we are, work in facades and specialty structures. So Thornton Tomasetti has a long history of specialty structures, and these are just a few images of uh, recently completed or nearly completed projects, just to give you a taste of some of the projects we work on. And the case study we're going to be reviewing fits right in this family. So I'm going to hand this to Amandine to go over the project specifics. Hi. Um, yes, yeah, so this case study is based on the design of uh, Mulberry Commons project at Newark Penn Station in New Jersey. Sage and Combs are the architect, and we, Phantom Tomasetti, developed the shell and glass facade structural system. Um, as a very first step of the design, we simplified the uh, roof geometry, 3D complex geometry by uh, studying the structural diagram of a two-dimensional arch uh, and the different parameters that define the uh, arch structure. Span, rise, support condition, type of arch, shape and loading. Once we fixed all these parameters, we optimized the shape by finding the inverted catenary geometry with the method of the hanging chain. And by modifying slightly the curvature line initially drawn by the architect, we managed to greatly increase uh, its structural efficiency. Once the 2D shape was fixed, we introduced the third dimension um, that can be resolved by many structural systems. Uh, we here focused and considered three main families that we compared together. Uh, we looked at the arch, at arch connected with rafter, purlin, and bracing systems that are uh, commonly used in roof structures. We looked at diagrid and grid shell schemes, uh, and we finally looked at uh, what we call the lenticular family, which consists of leaning arches. We set ourselves some fixed parameters to compare all those uh, schemes together. And what that study showed us is that even though the lenticular scheme is not the most efficient scheme, there is some room for optimization. And because this, uh, is at the intersection of structural efficiency and architect vision, uh, we decided to uh, select the leaning arches family. So um, by leaning arches, we define a leaning arch by uh, an arch that's inclined with respect to the vertical plane, resulting in uh, asymmetry along the longitudinal plane while maintaining symmetry, symmetry along the transversal plane. And this asymmetrical configuration results in a three-dimensional behavior. Uh, load applied vertically to a leaning arch generates out-of-plane um, loading, uh, internal load, loads, while uh, this out-of-plane behavior would only occur under lateral lo loading in the case of a planar arch. So from the lenticular form, we diverged this into five potential schemes that varied in configurations, which considered architectural desires, uh, constructability constraints, and potential structural optimization. And we took these schemes, and once the schemes were schematically vetted, a weighted evaluation matrix was created uh, to evaluate the schemes, both from a functional and qualitative series of criteria. And through discussions with the various project stakeholders, a weight and score was assigned to the various criteria for each scheme. Uh, the summary concludes that though scheme five was not the most structurally efficient, the project specific importance of aesthetic preference predominated. So scheme five was selected to move forward into the next phase of analysis and design development. There was a brief study in natural frequencies of this form just to get an understanding of what aspects of the arches needed to, to be tied together. It was determined that the arches do need to be tied together, but there will be further investigation required in, in future designs phases. A substantial design feature of the structure 
is the facade glass walls on either end of the structure. There are two options explored here, the first being a pre-tensioned cable net wall, and a series of studies were conducted to investigate the feasibility of pre-tensioning the facade system against the primary arch steel framing and existing conditions. Ultimately though, uh, the existing conditions and project limitations uh, made us pivot into a steel fin long span glass wall. And there are also select fins that were that are currently being considered to help manage the framing, uh, natural frequencies and stiffness of the structure. But there are further studies required to understand that optimized relationship between the primary arch framing and the secondary facade framing. So some takeaways from this case study. Um, what is theoretically efficient may not always be the best solution when there are unique project constraints or priorities. And also this instance requires uh, consideration for the tapering nature of the shells, architectural design intent, 3D effects of the three nested shells. This combined with the tall pretension facade systems, natural frequencies and more. Uh, there are many concepts in this instance in this project that were narrowed by addressing key design factors, which evolved the design into a project specific viable scheme, which will then be detailed in future design phases. So thank you for joining us again and let us know if you have any questions. Thanks. Thanks.